first one. I guess they're pretty tame in here. I'll get them. I'm stopped. Okay, I'll have this baby cleaned and dressed in no time. You make a fire. Anything's better than this prison house we've been having. We've been pretty lucky. They're probably looking along the railroad tracks for us. stir with you for three years. It's gonna seem funny to split up. Split up? Are you kidding? No. I'm going on to Susanna Pass alone. After all, I'm the one my uncle framed, not you. So I'll settle the score myself. You can settle the score, but you're also gonna settle half of that oil deal with me. I must have been stir crazy to make that deal with you. Stir crazy or not, you ain't cut me out. You'd be lost without my knowledge as an oil engineer. There's too much money in it. Besides, I can get guys like you for a dime a dozen. You'd better change your mind. We go into this deal together or... killed a fawn. But it looks like somebody's been poaching all right. I'd say they were hungry. That's why they built the fire. Roy, look at the tracks. They must have been in a wagon. Let's go pick them up. from the state penitentiary. There must be some convicts back along the road. 
Johnny, go to the ranger station and broadcast an alarm. Sure, all right. Al, you better get in touch with Sheriff Murphy and have him organize a posse. Right. Boy, you and I will go back along the road and see if we can pick him up. From the west there comes a story of a rootin' tootin' gal who packs a pistol on each shapely hip. She can draw and fire much quicker than the average eye can flicker. And her fame is spreading fast from lip to lip. I am Tugan Rita from down in Gower Gulch, an honorary critter with a footy four. All the cowboys swear I'm pretty. If they don't, it's your pity, cause they ain't around for long to swear much more. She can ride and rope and wrestle, good as any man you know. And when it comes to romance, I am tapped. Oh, I've always got a new love But she never leaves a blue love Cause when I drop him bang, he really drops I'm too gone, Rita, from down in Gower Gulch An unrecruiter with a funny four She should really get commission from her friend, the town mortician Cause I send a lot of business to his door But it's sad to tell poor Rita up and finally met her match A stranger by the name of Ranger Bill when I saw I couldn't scare him, then I knew I had to dare him To a shooting match where they both are at will Well, two-gun Rita from down in Gower Gulch Ain't gonna use her two guns anymore Cause my past is that I'm buried Ranger Bill and I got married And heaven knows what we will have in store But I am betting there will really be a Buddy, who you think you're kidding, huh? Some character, eh, Roy? Whoop! Hey, Roy, you bring the escaped convicts, no? We'll put them here. No, Carlos, we couldn't even find a trace of them. Oh, they will catch them. What is Sheriff Murphy? I have his dinner ready. I hate to tell you this, but his horse fell with him. The sheriff's in the hospital with a broken leg. <laughs> That's the best one I ever heard. Listen, don't laugh too much because you can get out from here until Sheriff Murphy comes back. It's not quite that bad, Carlos. It's your job to see that these fellows get over to court tomorrow morning at 10. I'm sort of taking over for the sheriff the next few days. Well, we still work for you. I answer the phone. Papa, he cooks. That's a general idea. I don't want any part of it. This guy scares me. Boo! Well, here, maybe this will help. Oh, no, 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 senor, gracias, no, no, no. Shame on Papa. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I just dropped in to let you know about the sheriff. I'm going over and have a talk with Martin Masters. It was his nephew that escaped jail. I'll see you later. Oye, Linda, you feed these guys. I go with Roy. Okay, Papa. You guys like roast beef? You mm -hmm. bet. Ice cream with cake? Yeah. Sure. Okay, I get the tamale. Good evening, Martin. Come in, come in. Well, I see you've heard of your nephew's escape. I have, and it's time somebody did something about it. Sheriff Murphy went to the hospital without appointing anybody to act in his place. For the next week or so, I'm taking over for Sheriff Murphy. Then I suggest you get busy. That's why I'm here. Have you told your brother about Bob's escape? Of course. Russell's as much afraid of Bob as I am. Everybody knows Bob is the black sheep of the family. He blamed Russell and I for sending him to prison, so we'd probably stop at nothing to get revenge. If you think you'll need a guard, I'd be glad Oh, to... I can take care of myself, thank you. If anything develops, you can get in touch with us at the fish hatchery the first thing in the morning. I want to have a talk with your brother. See you later. If those convicts show up, you tell us quick. We got plenty of room in our jail. Sure. Those clothes. 
Yeah. My clothes belong to the state penitentiary. So did Bob, your nephew, and myself, up till a couple of hours ago. Get over there and sit down. Bob, he's... He told me how you double-crossed him on that oil deal. Framed him and had him sent away. So you could steal your other brother's land. Tell me where Bob is. I can explain everything. I haven't told anybody about Russell's property. That's why I came to see you. Bob is... I... I... You won't have to worry about him anymore. He didn't make it. Oh, yeah, before he died, he left a message for you. He told me to tell you that I was going to be your new partner. Oh? I don't need a partner now that Bob's dead. Oh, yes, you do. You don't know anything about oil. I've been following this racket for years. That is until he caught up with me, trying to sell dry wells to suckers. And other things. Am I your new partner? OK. I guess there's plenty for both of us. As a matter of fact, I can use a man of your experience. What's the setup? Well, I'll tell you. This old chart here says that the oil is somewhere around there. That's where I come in. We'll need a seismograph and some dynamite. <laughs> we'll need a whole lot more than that. This whole valley is underwater. It's now a private lake where my brother raises trout for the state under contract. The water won't make any difference. When we shoot off the dynamite, the seismograph will record the vibrations under the earth. And we'll know where the pool is located. I'll have to write down the equipment we'll need. like somebody's down there fishing out of season. See, maybe you better go stop that fella. I've got a better idea. You go stop him. Me? Stop him? Sure. Here, take this along. Maybe you can scare him with it. Scare him with it? Oh, no, no. Better I do it with my bare hands. All right. Go ahead. Catch him with your bare hands. That's what I was trying to tell you, but, but... But what? Go ahead, Carlos. Remember, with your bare hands? Oh, no, you don't. You are the officer. Arrest her, quick. Arrest me? For what? For fishing in a closed area, with a net. And for being a lady when I think and you are a man. what's wrong with being a lady? Do you know any reason why? Hey, what are you doing? Don't do that. Those are special fish, and it took me all morning to catch them. How you like this? She admits she's still a fish. You got no fish license, no? I got no fish license. No. I don't need any. Where are you taking me? To the man that owns this lake and fish hatchery. Oh, you are, are you? You betcha my boots. <laughs> What's he going to do with that rope? <laughs> what do people usually do with a rope?
safety trigger. Sure look good in a frying pan. Hi, Roy. Hi, Russell. Get him, Jim. <laughs> How's the fish coming along? Fine. What brings you here so early in the morning? Your nephew, Bob Oliver. Martin phoned me about his escape. Have they found him yet? Not yet. That's why we came up here. We thought maybe you could help. Well, anything you say, Roy. You know, this is not the first time Bob has gotten Martin and me into trouble. Now, you said we came up here. Well, Carlos, the cook. He's taking care of Sheriff Murphy's office while the sheriff's laid up. I heard about his fall. That's too bad. But with your nephew on the loose like this, you're not going to be safe at night. You mind if we kind of stick around here until this thing's cleared up? Why, you're welcome anytime, whether Bob's loose or not. But I'm not alone here anymore. I've got an assistant, Doc Parker. An assistant? Yes, an ichthyologist. You mean a biologist? Yes, but a specialist in fish. You see, after signing that big contract with the state, I figured I ought to get somebody in here to help. Just where is this Doc Parker now? Down by the lake. Not with a net? Yes, how did you know? Was this Doc about... Just about that tall. Well, did her head have... Just covered with curls. Well, we've really done it this time, Russell. What do you mean? We just arrested her down by the lake. We thought she was poaching. When I left, Carlos was going to tie her up and bring her up here. Tie her up? We better go out and stop him before I lose an assistant. You're not kidding. Mr. Masters, is he giving you trouble? Doc, there's been some mistake. This is Roy Rogers, the local game warden. So? How do you do? So that's where she picked up that jujitsu. No wonder she threw Carlos. Speaking of your friend Carlos, I think he wants to talk to you outside. Socorro, Roy, auxilio. Oh. Ayúdame, Roy, ayúdame. Esta muchacha por poco me mata. Tú no sabes. I better get you and Doc together. Come on up to a party tonight. We'll make it a fish fry. It's a good idea. Oi, oi. You still hungry, Jim? Between you and those hungry rangers out there, we're going to have to restock this lake. Hey, Doc, what a night. Yeah, isn't it romantic? You want me to show you how to get a man? Yes. Fellers, soup's on! Oh, hey, Doc, that's boy. pretty good. <laughs> He's here, boss. Send him in. Drive the truck around the bank. Okay. Where's he going? Around the bank. I just checked the seismograph and the rest of the instruments. Everything's okay. Where's the dynamite? It's in the closet. Now, I hope the explosion won't make too much noise. I'm under 40 feet of water. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I picked tonight for the test because Russell's giving Rogers a fish fry at the hatchery. They'll be too busy to hear anything. Knowing where they are, we won't run into them. Exactly. Let's go. Jim. Just 
just what I'll say. Oh, honey, name the day. I'm whistling a tune, or riding down the trail, hidden for Susanna Pass. Knowing mighty soon, I'll see the one I love, waiting in Susanna Pass. In Sueños, maybe say Casey. charge on the bottom? Yeah. Now, oh, it's like this. The blast starts the machine, and as the sound goes down into the earth, the machine records the echo as it returns. Now, the intensity of the echo is recorded on this tape right here. When the sound hits the oil strata, it just doesn't record any further. All right. Let it go. That was a good one. I feel like an earthquake. I don't think so. It could have been an explosion, but I didn't hear anything. I didn't either. Nor me. Come on, fellas, let's have a look. That blast will surely kill a lot of my brother's fish. So he'll think it was poachers.
Look, this accounts for that explosion we felt last night. Sure killed a lot of Russell's fish. Yeah, must be big time operators. You're probably right. I'd say they had a two-way radio from what was left of that equipment in the truck. Well, you go ahead and finish the patrol. I'm going up to the hatcher and have a talk with Russell. The poachers killed nearly half your fish. That might mean the canceling of the contract you had with the state. You're right, Martin. If that happens, I don't know what I'd do. Right now, the lake will have to be restocked. But that takes money, and you haven't got it. As your brother, I advise you to get out of the fish business. There's an Eastern syndicate inquiring about the water rights. Why not let me try and sell your property before you go bankrupt? Yes, I know. But I thought in your financial situation... Russell, I'm sorry. You know as your brother I'd be glad to help you, but my money is tied up for months. Your only salvation is to accept a good offer before it's too late. Maybe you're right. Now, if you want me to get in touch with that syndicate to renew the offer, I'd be glad to... No, no. Don't do it. And don't you worry about my salary. I'll work for nothing. Hello, Roy. Hello. I couldn't help over here in Russell, and I wouldn't worry too much about selling out. You've raised a lot of fish for this state, and I don't think the Fish and Game Commission will let you down. What's the Fish and Game Commission got to do with it? This is a situation where Russell needs money, or he may lose his entire holdings. Maybe I can do something about that, too. I'll go to the Capitol tomorrow and see that the commission restocks your loss. You can pay him back later. That might be a good idea. But what guarantee has Russell got that this won't happen again? Your job is to catch those responsible for this, and apparently you haven't done it. Well, think it over, Russell, and let me know. Russell, is there anybody besides Bob that you can think of that would want to put you out of business? No. Why? That explosion last night. If Bob did it for revenge, then it's only a matter of time until we catch him. If he didn't do it, well, I can't understand why poachers would want to take the chance of blowing up the lake when they could have taken the fish with nets. Well, whoever did it certainly did a good job. Well, don't give up yet. I'm sure after I talk to the commission, everything will work out all right. Keep him cheered up, will you? Okay, Roy. That's Martin. Yeah. Hello, Roberts. Don't call me Roberts anymore. This hair and these glasses, the name is now Walter P. Johnson, president of an Eastern Land Syndicate. Vince, take these clothes outside and bury them. This character's gone forever. OK, Mr. Johnson. Well, do we own the fish hatchery? No, my brother won't sell. Rogers gave him the idea the state would help him restock his lake. That's great. Just great. A couple of million dollars in oil under that lake, and you stand by and let your stupid brother raise fish in it. You know, Martin, I've been thinking. Maybe we've been going about this in the wrong way. There's an easier way, you know. What do you mean, an easier way? Well, suppose this brother Russell. Just suppose that Russell had an accident. He couldn't very well leave the fish hatchery to his nephew Bob, could he? No. Because Bob got killed when he tried to make that prison break with me. But you, Martin, you're a fine, upstanding citizen, publisher of the newspaper. Clean as a whistle. You do stand to inherit that lake, don't you? That's carrying things pretty far, Roberts. Depends on how far a man wants to go for a couple of million dollars. You just can't shake that off, Martin. Not a couple of million. Maybe... Maybe there's no oil there at all. Oh, yeah? That's what you think. Here's the tape from the seismograph. I saved it from the other night. Now, the oscillation of this line proves that there's definitely oil there, and a lot of it. We got all the cards, Martin. Even the sheriff's out of town. Carlos, <laughs> he wouldn't know an accident if he saw one. Yeah, but Rogers would. So throw mud at him, make him look bad, get him transferred. 
You still publish that newspaper, don't you? Hey, Roy, listen to what this paper says. King Ward and Roy Roaches have failed completely in the job of apprehending the poacher who blew up Masters Lake last Tuesday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not so fast. I'm mad plenty. Well, I better come into town. See, I will meet you at the newspaper office. Thanks, Rita. There seems to be a little trouble in town, Daryl. Take over, will you? Sure thing, Roy. speaks for itself, senorita. Now, if you don't mind, I'm very busy. You'll be plenty busy when my friend Roy Roger Hill come to see you. Vince, would you please show this young lady to the door? Come on, little lady. I don't want to. Come on. So, tough guy, huh? Who do you think you are, anyhow? Nobody's gonna throw me out. Okay. Nobody's gonna throw you out. Shake. Okay, shake. Oh, don't guy, you double crosser, you! Get me down! Get me down! Oh, you think you're a wise guy, eh? I punch you right in the nose! Senor Martin, he won't talk to me. He'll talk to me. No, he won't. Not a boy, Roy! ridiculous. Your papa is only the jail cook. Rogers, I want you to meet Walter P. Johnson, president of the Eastern Syndicate. Glad I know you, Rogers. I'm sorry about this, but I never could resist a good fight. That's all right. This is what I was telling you about, Roy. What I want to know is why you printed this article in your paper. I represent a free press. I call him as I see him. You call this one pretty quick. You could have given us more time. Being the publisher of the paper, I think I owe it to the people of this community to keep them informed. Now, you can't intimidate the press. Get out of here. Come on, Roy. Before I get mad, I'm punch somebody in the nose. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Martin. But if you'd waited a little while longer, you could have printed the results. Hmm. Wise guy. You better see a doctor. Rogers was speaking of results. When do we get results? You haven't even mentioned it all morning. Well, I've been thinking. And? Three times a day, Russell goes out to test the temperature of the water. He goes out in a small boat. And I remember from our kid days, he never learned to swim. I'm gonna tip my hat and shout a good, good morning. Never saw a sky that looked so blue. I'm gonna sing a song for it's a great day dawning. A brand new promising view. 
Come on and smile and greet me with a good, good morning. From now on, we're going to chase the blues. Got lots of things to do. You'd better stop that yawning. Because we've got no time to lose. Open up your heart and let it look at the sun. Brother, ain't that a sign? Good to be alive, ain't you the lucky one? Things just gotta go right. I'm gonna shake your hand and holler good, good morning. That's the thing that everyone should do. I'm gonna lift my voice for it's a new day morning. A good, good morning to you. Open up your heart and let it look at the sun. Brother, ain't that a sign? Good to be alive, ain't you the lucky one? Things just gotta go right. I'm gonna shake your hand and holler good, good morning. That's the thing that everyone should do. I'm gonna lift my voice for it's a new day morning. A good, good morning to you. We mean a good, good morning to you. that seat over there for me. Why, sure, Doc. Okay, Doc. Thanks a lot. I guess I can carry on from here. Okay, we can take a hint. Come on, fellas. We've got work to do, too. Oh, oh no, I didn't mean that. I just meant that the boss would be back pretty soon. Well, I was just kidding, but we really do have to go. Well, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. This is it. Go on back to the hatchery and keep that girl busy. See you in town later. Hi, Roy. See you later. So long, Russell. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm Mr. Johnson, head of an Eastern Land Syndicate. Oh? What can I do for you? I'm looking for a Mr. Russell Masters. Well, he isn't here right now. But I'm his assistant, Doc Parker. Be with you in a minute. That looks very interesting. What are you doing? These are trout eggs, still in incubation. I'm picking out the dead and unfertile ones. If you'll look right close, you'll see that the dead ones show up as white. And if they aren't removed every day, there's a chance they'll spoil the fertile ones. Mm-hmm. What about these? They've got black spots on them. <laughs> well, those have already started their hatching procedure. These are called hatching baskets. See? See, the bottom has open wire. And as the fish hatch out, can you see the ones hatched out down there? Uh-huh. Well, then they fall through that open wire to the bottom of the trough. Only sometimes they have a little trouble getting through, so we have to help them by lifting the basket. <laughs> see? What do you feed them? Well, at first, they live on their yolk sacs, which are eventually absorbed into their body. After they rise to the top, that's a signal they're hungry. And we have to feed them three times a day. We start them out on ground liver. That's very, very interesting. I had no idea there was so much science attached to it. Fish and Game Commission of California goes to a lot of trouble in keeping these streams and lakes stocked. And it's fish like these we want to put in those streams to keep the sportsmen happy. Aren't they beauties? They're wonderful. Even now, Mr. Masters is out on the lake checking the water.
Hey, Roy, we got him. Roy, look at this. I told you it might pay to drag for the boat. I had a hunch he was murdered. Yeah, you're right. Those are bullet holes. So he wasn't drowned. He was shot to death, huh? He wasn't shot. The coroner couldn't find a mark on his body. He was drowned, all right, but not accidentally. Somebody shot this boat out from under him who knew he couldn't swim. They're holding the inquest right now. I better get there quick. Bring this boat into town as quick as you can. Name of the deceased, Russell Masters. Age 54, until death, owner and operator of the Susanna Pass Fish Hatchery. There has been no evidence that any person, known or unknown, was in any way responsible for the death of Russell Masters. No marks on the body, no evidence of attack or poison. Russell Masters was unable to swim and his death was caused by drowning. Death is hereby recorded as accidental. Question? Mr. Connor, I'd like to make a brief statement. It so happens I'm familiar with Russell's will. As his brother and nearest relative, I inherit the fish hatchery and all surrounding property. I know our communities were proud of my brother's work at the hatchery, and it's with regret that I have to announce that I'm discontinuing the work there. I have a business of my own, and I don't feel able to carry on my brother's work. I also regret that I must dismiss my brother's able assistant, Miss Parker. Just a minute, Mr. All right, Miss Parker. I think it's better if you let me handle this. Mr. Masters, as your brother's attorney, I drew up a new will for him just four days ago. When Russell's nephew, Bob Oliver, escaped from prison with some other convict, Russell feared for his life. He decided to draw up a new will. The fish hatchery and all surrounding property is left in trust to his able assistant, Miss Kay Parker. Also by its terms to his brother, who is independently wealthy, to you. He leaves his blessings and the sum of one dollar. One dollar? I'll see about that will in court. One moment, Masters. I'll ask you to remain. Now, I want to add something. I think this inquest should start all over again. Russell Masters didn't drown by accident. He was murdered. Murdered? Have you any proof of this? Yes. Mr. Coroner? I dragged that lake and found the boat Russell Masters was drowned from. It was full of bullet holes from a high-powered rifle. That boat was shot from under him by somebody who knew he couldn't swim. Do you know who fired the shot? I do. I'm arresting Miss Kate Parker for the murder of Russell Masters. Roy, are you out of your mind? Did you or did you not know that the will was changed in your favor? Well, of course I knew, but you can't accuse me of a thing like that. It's ridiculous. There's your motive. Miss Parker killed Russell Masters to inherit his property. They trained you to shoot while you were in the Marines. I'll have to hand it to them. They trained you very well. Mr. Coroner, I think I can prove right here and now that I couldn't possibly have done this thing. Would you please repeat the time established as the time that Russell Masters drowned? Examination of the deceased proved conclusively that he died between three and four in the afternoon. Good, because there's a man right here in this room that was with me at the hatchery between three and four in the afternoon. And I refer to Mr. Walter P. Johnson. Will you please speak, Mr. Johnson? <clears throat> I'm afraid as a witness for Miss Parker's defense, well, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint her. It was not in the afternoon that I visited the hatchery. It was before lunch, around 11. I left at 12. Both she and Russell Masters were alone when I left. Mr. Carlos. As your this attorney, Ms. Parker, I advise you not to say anything. Carlos, I want this woman locked up and held for trial. I'll have more evidence within 48 hours. Remember, the last time I try it. Come on, lock her up. I'm sorry, Doc. I mean, Miss Parker. Would you please come with me? Please. Ms. Parker, any statement for the press? No. You think you're pretty smart, huh? Come on, let's do a cosa semejante, una pobre muchacha que no tiene la culpa de nada. Usted está loco, que es lo que le pasa. Hi, boss. Some excitement, huh? Looks like we're licked. I think we're better off than we were before. 
But I thought that dame inherits the lake. How can she inherit anything if she's going to be sent up for murder? That's Russell's nearest blood relative. He stands to inherit everything when she goes up to the state pen for women. She might even go further than that. She might go to the electric chair. But do you think they'll make it stick? We're going to try to make it stick. Al, where's that picture, the one you took the day Roger staged the fight in here? Uh, right here in the files. What's a picture got to do with it? Rogers did all he could for us when he had that girl locked up. We may have to pull a few shenanigans to try and keep her locked up. And I don't want that Rogers in my hair, not for a few days anyhow, because we're going to kill every fish in that lake while she's in jail. That'll make it impossible for her to raise enough money to restock the lake. And nobody will finance a ghost lake. This is how we're going to get rid of Rogers. Now, wait a minute, Miss Parker. The press may be able to help you. Throw him out, Carlos. Haven't I had trouble enough already? Papa, what's the big idea? Why you let him in here, the big skunk? He wants to speak to the prisoner. He wants to put what she says in the paper. Look what he put in the paper about Roy Rogers. He makes plenty trouble. Now he gets Roy Rogers sent out of town. The picture speaks for itself. Nobody slugs me in my own office and gets away with it. I've had Rogers recalled to the Capitol for investigation. Recalled? He's lucky I don't sue him. Now, you listen to me, you big troublemaker. You wouldn't get an interview of that girl tonight on any other night. Porque como me siga mortificando, lo voy a poner en esta celda. Usted pone muchísimas mentiras en este periódico. Now, look, senorita, I can't speak Spanish. Do you mind telling me what all this means in English? In English, it means get out! Roger's leaving. This is a bad break for you, senorita. Papa. The prisoner, she's a lady. She's going to sleep now. So you be a gentleman going there, okay? That's it. Papa. So don't you wake her up till morning. You can come out now, Papa. Buenas noches. Good night. Don't worry, senorita. This is the safest place in town. We never lose any prisoner yet. from your eyes and try and realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Brush those tears from your eyes and try and realize that from now on I'll always be true. I went away, but I didn't mean to stay. I know I'll regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try and realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Brush those tears from your eyes. I'm sorry I made you cry. Darling, try and realize I love you until the day I die. I know that I'll regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try and realize that the ache in my heart is for you. The ache in my heart is for you. She's here. Boy, get into town and keep an eye on Martin. Don't you think somebody should stay around, Roy? Yeah, Al, go up to the tower. Here, take a boat with you. Hiya, Doc. Rita. Hi, Doc. Hi, Hi Doc. Hello, Rita. Rita, what Good is evening, this? Good evening, Doc. 
Rita, you didn't tell me he... Glad to see you. The pleasure, I regret to say, is not mutual. Take me back to jail, will you, Rita? I told you somebody wanted to see you. Here's the somebody. What are you doing here? I thought you were ordered to the Capitol for investigation. I was, but I tore up the order. I've got plenty to keep me busy right here in Susanna Pass. Busy putting innocent women into jail? Sit down. I can explain that. That's why I had Rita bring you here. I didn't have a chance to talk to you at the inquest. Too crowded. Right now, I'm hiding out. Everybody in town thinks I'm at the Capitol, and I want them to go on thinking that. Mr. Roger, he knows you don't kill anybody. Then putting me in jail was your idea of a practical joke? I put you in jail for your own protection. Russell Masters was killed in that boat by somebody who was after his property. Now it's your property, and you face the same danger. In jail, under guard seemed to be the safest place for you. I'm terribly grateful, of course. But I don't get it. I've heard of a lot of motives for murder, but I never heard of one motivated by one man's desire to own another man's small experimental fish hatchery. It isn't fish they're after. It's oil. Oil? Yes, oil under the bottom of that lake. That's what the explosion was that night. They used dynamite and a seismograph to locate the pool. Have you any idea who's behind it? I know who's behind it. Now I have to prove it. That's where the boys were going to kind of keep an eye on him. Uh, Rita, take her back to jail and tell Carlos to double the guard. I got you into jail and I'll get you out. I hope you believe that. I certainly do believe it, and thank you. Al, I thought you were up in the tower. Uh, I was, but... Uh... Would you do me a favor, please, Roy? Well, sure. Uh, w would you put your guns on the floor, please? What are you talking about? Don't ask, uh, don't ask questions. Just put your guns on the floor, please, please. Okay. <laughs> now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Yeah. I'll oh. tell you what it's all about. If you hadn't have done what he said, I'd have... Uh... Roy, I'm, I'm sorry I had to fool you, but he had the drop on you through the window. Where'd he get the gun? It's mine. Bob Oliver. So you recognize me, huh? He told me Russell was drawn. What happened? He was murdered. You know who did it? Not yet. But I got a pretty good idea. Say, how about giving these girls a chance to get out of here? <laughs> so they can run and tell teacher on me? Nobody gets hurt if you do what I say. Get rid of him. You stay here. Hey, Roy, I saw Martin and his gang heading to the lake. Well, you better get over there and keep an eye on him. Go on, you can come back in the morning. Say, what's going on? You playing games? Hi, Doc. Uh, hello, Foy. Uh... What are you doing over there? Wait a minute, Foy. You better get over there. You might be able to pick up some news or something. Hurry up. Okay. I'll see you the first thing in the morning. All right, Ranger, put those guns on the table. You two, get over there and sit down. Looks like you picked up a bullet. It was no bullet. It was a knife. But I'll square that off. Howard so figured to square things with an uncle of mine named Martin Masters. Look, Ranger, I didn't pull that job they sent me up for. I was framed. That's what they all say. Only I'm going to be different. I'm going to prove I was framed. And you're the lad that's going to help me do it. Get over and sit down. I want to talk. You're the law. All you got to do is hear a confession out of my uncle. You'll take care of him, won't you? I certainly will. Good, then I'll be in the clear. And just how do you expect to get a confession out of him? Well, the only language a hero like my uncle can understand this. Go on, relax where you are. We got a long night ahead of us. If he's heading for the lake like that guy said, then you and me can catch him up there by daylight. Half hour. We'll take to the hills, not the road. 
I don't want to run into those boys of yours on the way back. Remember what she said. If I didn't hurt the girl, she'd give me a chance to prove myself. That's right. Let's roll. over there, they might get spooky. Okay, boss. One more blast should kill all the fish that's left in the cove. Now get going. Hey, listen! Somebody there! Hey! Hey, listen! Hey! Hey, fellow! The prisoners escaped from jail and my daughter Rita, she's flying the corpse! You listen to me. Bob Oliver showed up. He took Roy. They're headed for the lake. There's four of them. Roll out and put this behind those rocks. It looks like my uncle in that boat there. He's got a surprise in store. Get off. We'll leave the horses here. One of you goes for your guns, and I hope it's you, Roberts. Up. Okay, drop him. Sure. You make one move. Bob, take it easy. Uncle Mark, just sit where you are. There's dynamite in that boat. I figured that. Don't frame me, Uncle Mark. Don't who set me up.
Where is he, Jim? Roberts back to jail where he came from. Well, that's it. Sure going to be a lot of hard work, though. But worth it, Doc. Work done by hatcheries like this doesn't just mean restocking lakes and streams. It means a sportsman and the youth of America will have a chance to get away from crowded cities and their troubles. Go fishing and enjoy the privileges our forefathers had. So good luck to you, Doc. Oh, honey, name the day. I'm whistling. 